Hey guys, welcome back to Cyber Platter. Today we will talk about denial of service attack and distributed denial of service attack. A denial of service attack is like a traffic jam on the internet highway. Imagine someone sends so much fake traffic to a website that it gets overwhelmed and can't handle any real visitors. Say this is the website. So you, someone is sending a lot of fake traffic to this. It gets so overwhelmed that it can't even handle any real users real visitors. This makes the website unavailable for everyone else trying to access it. So a DOS attack is a malicious attempt to disrupt the normal functioning of a targeted server, service or network by overwhelming it with a flood of illegitimate traffic. In a DOS attack, the attacker typically sends a large volume of requests or uh, connections to the target, exhausting its resources. Resources such as bandwidth, CPU, or memory. As a result, legitimate users are unable to access the service, causing a denial of service. Hence the name denial of service. So DDoS attack, is a variant of a DOS attack. In DDoS, multiple compromised devices are used to flood a traffic with a lot of traffic. These multiple compromised devices are called bots or zombies. These bots or zombies form a network known as a botnet, which is under the control of the attacker. So this is the attacker. All these bots, all these devices are under the control of this attacker. So they are called bots or zombies. And all of these bots form a network called botnet. DDoS attacks are more powerful and difficult to mitigate than traditional DOS attacks because they originate from multiple sources. This makes it challenging to distinguish legitimate traffic and malicious traffic. Suppose say, DDoS is like having an army of robots all trying to get into a store at the same time. Say this is a store and this army of robots are trying to get into the store at the same time. Each robot keeps trying to get in even though there's no room and they block the entrance for real customers. So in a DDoS attack, many computers controlled by a hacker flood a website with fake requests, making it impossible for legitimate users to access it. There are different types of DOS attacks like TCP SYN flood, UDP flood, and HTTP flood. First, let's talk about TCP SYN flood attack. This attack targets the handshake process of TCP. TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol. This is one of the main protocols in the internet protocol suite along with IP that is internet protocol. TCP provides reliable, ordered and error check delivery of data between devices over a network. That is, it ensures that the data is delivered accurately and in correct sequence. TCP is a method used for sending and receiving data reliably over the internet. So it makes sure that data gets to where it needs to go without errors and in the right order. Think of it like, you know, a reliable postal service for digital information. TCP is used for applications that require reliable data delivery such as web browsing, email, FTP, that is file transfer, and remote access like SSH. Now let's talk about the handshake process of the transmission control protocol. This is like a friendly conversation between two devices before they start sending any data. Let's say that this is the sender, that is the client, and this one is the receiver, the server. The client wants to start a conversation with the server. So it sends a hello message called a SYN packet to the server. SYN is synchronized packet to the server. The server receives the SYN packet and responds a hello back. And this hello back is called a SYN ACK packet, synchronize acknowledge packet. This acknowledges the SYN packet and says, I am ready to talk as well. And then once the client receives the SYN ACK packet, it responds with an ACK packet, that is acknowledge packet, confirming that it received the server's response. Now the connection is established and these two can start sending data back and forth. Now that you understand what is the handshake process, let's go back to the TCP SYN flood attack. So this is the attacker's device and the other one is the target. 
This is the target device. Now the attacker sends a flood of SIM packets to the target server. So pretending to initiate connections. But the attacker does not complete the handshake process by sending the final ACK packet. As a result, the target server responds to each SIN packet with a SIN ACK packet. That means it is allocating resources to establish a potential connection. But the attacker never sends the final ACK packet to complete the handshake. So these connections remain open and incomplete. So with a large number of half open connections accumulating on the server, its resource such as memory and processing capacity become overwhelmed. So the legitimate clients attempting to establish connections with this server are either delayed or denied service due to the lack of available resources. The next attack type is UDP flood attack. UDP is a denial of service attack that targets servers or networks by overwhelming them with a flood of UDP packets. UDP stands for User Datagram Protocol. So there are two devices and the attacker sends a large number of UDP packets to the target server or network. Unlike TCP, UDP is connectionless. That is, each packet is sent independently and does not require a handshake process to establish a connection. So when the target receives these UDP packets, so it tries to process them. But unlike TCP, UDP does not require acknowledgement or verification of receipt. This means the server does not check if the packets are coming from a legitimate source or if they are part of a valid communication session. With a flood of incoming UDP packets, the target server's resources such as bandwidth, CPU and memory become overwhelmed as it tries to process each packet. This can cause the server to become slow or unresponsive and this leads to a denial of service for legitimate users trying to access the server or network. So UDP flood attacks are difficult to mitigate because they exploit the stateless nature of the UDP protocol making it challenging to differentiate legitimate traffic from malicious traffic. The next type of DOS attack is HTTP flood. This attack targets the web servers by overwhelming them with a flood of HTTP requests. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. So the attacker uses a botnet or a large number of compromised devices to send massive volume of HTTP requests to the target web server. These requests typically target specific URLs or web pages on the server. As the target web server receives an overwhelming number of HTTP requests, its sources such as CPU, memory and bandwidth become exhausted, trying to process and respond to each request. With that, the server's resources overwhelmed. It becomes slow and unresponsive to legitimate user requests and this leads to denial of service for legitimate users trying to access the website or web application hosted on the server. HTTP flood attacks can take various forms like for example GET floods that is sending a large number of GET requests and then there is POST floods that is sending a large number of POST requests or mixed method flood that is combining both GET and POST requests. Now let's look at some of the real world examples of DOS and DDoS attacks. First one is GitHub. It happened in 2018. So GitHub is a popular code hosting platform and it experienced a massive DDoS attack that lasted for several days in 2018. The attack was attributed to a nation state actor widely believed to be China targeting GitHub for hosting content related to the censorship evading software known as Great Fire. Next one is Sony PlayStation Network, Sony's PSN. This happened in 2011. So the PSN experienced a prolonged outage due to a large-scale DDoS attack. The motivation behind the attack was unclear, but it resulted in significant disruption to Sony's online gaming services, affecting millions of users worldwide. Next one 
is a proton mail in 2015 proton mail is a secure email service and was hit by a series of ddos attacks that disrupted its services for several days the attackers demanded a ransom payment in bitcoin to cease the attacks but proton mail refused to pay the ransom and the attacks eventually subsided now let's talk about the techniques and tools the common techniques and tools used for identifying and mitigating these attacks first one is traffic analysis so analyzing network traffic patterns can help identify abnormal spikes or patterns indicative of a ddos or dos attack network traffic analyzers such as wireshark tcp dump and netflow analyzers can provide real time visibility into network traffic and help identify anomalies the next one is to implement rate rem- limiting mechanisms this can restrict the number of requests or connections allowed from a single source within a specified time frame time frame so this specific single source can send only say 2 to 3 requests in 1 second to this target or to this server firewalls load balancers and intrusion prevention systems often include rate limiting features to protect against dos and ddos attacks next is configuring access control lists that is acls on routers and firewalls to filter incoming traffic based on source ip addresses protocols or ports next one is web application firewalls waps these can inspect and filter http traffic to web applications blocking malicious requests and known attack patterns some of the commercial waf solutions include mod security cloudflare waf and imperver waf they protect against http based attacks next is content delivery networks that is cdns cdns distribute web content across multiple servers and data centers reducing the impact of ddos attacks by distributing traffic and providing caching and load back balancing services next one is to use anomaly detection systems these can monitor network behavior and alert administrators to deviations from normal patterns and deviations from normal patterns signal potential ddos attacks or dos attacks intrusion detection systems intrusion prevention systems and sim solutions that is security information and event management platforms incorporate anomaly detection capabilities for threat detection and response Next one is DDoS mitigation services. These are dedicated DDoS mitigation services that provide cloud-based protection against large-scale DDoS attacks, leveraging advanced detection and mitigation techniques. Next one is geolocation filtering. This blocks traffic from specific geographic regions known for hosting malicious actors or originating attacks. Geolocation based blocking features are available in firewalls, IPS and WAF solutions allowing organizations to block traffic from high risk regions. Next one is IP reputation lists. These lists contain known malicious IP addresses associated with botnets, attackers or compromised devices. Blocking traffic from these IPs can prevent attacks. Threat intelligence feeds and IP reputation services provide up to date lists of malicious IPs for integration into network security devices. Next one is behavioral analysis techniques. These monitor user and system behavior for deviations from normal patterns. This identifies suspicious activities indicative of DDoS and DoS attacks. Advanced security analytics tools leverage machine learning and AI algorithms to detect anomalous behavior and identify emerging threats in real time. Next is to build a scalable infrastructure with redundancy and failover capabilities that can help absorb and mitigate the impact of DDoS attacks by distributing traffic across multiple servers and data centers. So cloud computing platforms, virtualization technologies and load balancing solutions enable organizations to scale their infrastructure dynamically in response to increased traffic or attacks. Next is to to segment the network into separate zones 
zones or segments. This can contain the spread of DDoS attacks and prevent attacks from accessing critical systems or resources. Network segmentation solutions such as VLAN, subnetting, and firewall policies enforce access controls and isolate sensitive assets from potential threats. Next is developing and implementing comprehensive emergency response plans or incident response plans specifically tailored to DDoS and DOS attacks. And this can facilitate a coordinated and effective response during an attack. Incident response frameworks, playbooks, tabletop exercises help organizations prepare for and respond to DDoS attacks in a structured manner, minimizing downtime and disruption. Next is SYN cookies. These are cryptographic techniques used to mitigate TCP SYN flood attacks by eliminating the need to allocate resources for incomplete connections. So here, instead of maintaining a connection queue, the server generates a SYN cookie. And this is based on the client's initial SYN packet. This cookie contains enough information to verify the client's request without storing any state on the server. So if the client sends an ACK packet with the correct cookie, the server reconstructs the connection state and completes the handshake process. SYN cookies effectively protect against SYN flow attacks by minimizing resource consumption on the server and preventing SYN queue exhaustion. So that's it for today guys. I hope this video helped you understand a little bit more about DOS and DDoS attacks. If so, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share our videos. That helps us a lot. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you again in another video with another topic. Until then, take care of yourself.